You may be seated if you are in a hurry. Well, what a great day to be here together. What a joy to be together after all that we have and continue to deal with with the pandemic, to be in a packed sanctuary together, to have school coming in session. What a gift of God. What a gift of God to join together with folks from Mount Olive Lutheran on the south side in Fair Park. We are welcoming you. Thank you, Mount Olive friends, for being here today. And we are grateful for those of you visiting with us today. Uh, Mount Olive and Christ have developed a relationship that I believe is a fruitful one to remind us that we are called to serve all parts of the city. We are called to be across borders and barriers that separate us, and so this relationship reminds us of that gift. And so also we are grateful to be here with the school teachers. Thanks be to God for preschool teachers. We are thankful for you and for your work and your labor and for your director and for your pastor and your vicar who are helping you to helping these children to grow up, to learn, and to know that they are loved and cherished and cared for, and what a gift that is. And after the difficult times we have had teaching and leading, what a gift it is to celebrate you. Uh, I know that. I was privileged to serve a congregation in Fort Worth before I was elected bishop that had a large preschool, and what a joy that was for the life of the church and the life of the community. And so parents who have come, who are not part of this congregational family, but bring your kids here. Thank you for the trust that you place in this school and in this church. And uh, thank you for being here today because it is important to be connected. And so you know the community and they know you and that this is a relationship that extends beyond just having your kids go to school here. Uh, we care for your children as if they were our own. And what a gift that is to have that opportunity. So yes, I was in Fort Worth before I was elected bishop, and so I did not fly from Sierra Leone to be with you today. Although there are times when the divide between Fort Worth and Dallas can seem greater than the gulf between us and Africa. Uh, before I was elected bishop, I made all kinds of snide remarks about Dallas. It's, uh, it's required, if you live in Fort Worth, to say all sorts of things like, life's too short to live in Dallas. <laughs> but now I love you all. <laughs> And Dallas is well known to me in this congregation. I don't, I don't even have to get my GPS out to find you. But what a joy to fly here this morning to come across the freeways. And Bishop, what a joy to have you with us. We thank God that you were able to be here. Bishop Momo has served in Sierra Leone as their bishop now for seven years of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Sierra Leone. And he'll talk a little bit more about that in the forum if you want to join us. Uh, but for seven years, we've been trying to get him here to visit with this community, to be in the northern Texas, northern Louisiana Synod. And for seven years, uh, our State Department said, no, we will not give him a visa. He cannot travel here. But thanks be to God that after seven years of trying, through our connections in the Lutheran World Federation and through the churchwide offices and our efforts as Synod, he is here and with us. And then we'll travel to Chicago to meet with other colleagues and to gain connections but today, we are grateful you are here with us today. After that blessing and joy, I mean, Ben, it's kind of redundant for me to preach, isn't it, at this point? I mean, you, you, gave, me a, you gave me a tough act to follow. And then the lectionary hands me this, this text that you talk about a Debbie Downer text, man. We could have had Jesus welcoming the little children, right? We could have had all, but no, no, we'll go with this. We'll go with this. Jesus calling the church folk hypocrites. Right? Calling the bishop hypocrite. Right? Jesus going into the Sabbath, going into the synagogue on the Sabbath, teaching, and then he sees this woman. This woman that we read has been bent over with an ailment for 18 years. 18 years she has been suffering, and Jesus sees her, calls her over, and says, You are set free. And the church folk don't like that. Because the church folk like the rules, right? That's what they think of bishops. They think bishops, we like the rules. And some of us do, and sometimes we do that. But 
But they don't like that because it's not the way that they think it should be, and they don't like it because they don't understand the why. The why matters. There are lots of books about that, right? What is your why? Why do you do the things you do? What gets you up in the morning? Why do you teach? Why do you lead? What do you do? Why matters? Our why matters. And Jesus is doing this thing because he understands his why. His why is he has been sent to teach and to preach and to set people free. And that's his why. But it doesn't mean that the law doesn't matter. See, this is important, and and for those of you visiting with us today, I apologize, we're gonna do just a little bit of Lutheran theological learning. Lutherans are really big on the idea of law and gospel. The law matters. God gives us the law for a reason. The law keeps us safe. The law is what protects us. The law is what tells us, as I'm driving here from Fort Worth, that I should drive a certain speed but not exceed that speed, right? That's to keep me safe and to keep the other people on the road safe, correct? And none of you ever exceed that speed that is designated, correct? I am sure. And, uh, and my heart did not quicken when I came around a curve and I saw a police officer there and I thought, am I driving the right speed? But the law is a good thing. Sabbath is a good thing. Rest is a good thing. And that's why it's in the law to say, take a day to have Sabbath rest. Parents, have Sabbath. You need it, believe me, I know, I've got three of them. (laughs) You need that Sabbath. You need that time apart. You need that time to worship God. This is not a bad thing. Sabbath makes a difference. And the people in Jesus' day were very good about observing that Sabbath. And so when Jesus comes in the synagogue and he breaks the law, they wanna know why. What's his why? Because couldn't he have done it on Tuesday? Tuesday's a good day for healing. Right? Come back. Come back on Wednesday. But Jesus says his why. And his why is that this woman has been suffering and she need not suffer any longer. She doesn't need to wait. The sign is not closed because it happens to be the Sabbath. Because Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. Jesus is the one sent by God into the world, and Jesus is sent here to set people free. And then that call then gets extended to us, as people who are called to be followers of God. I love this text from Isaiah. Isaiah 58, it's one of my favorite pieces of scripture because it gets to the heart of what we're getting at right now. Because we live in a time, friends, when folks like those hypocrites in the synagogue, we're ready to point out everyone else's flaws, aren't we? We're really good at figuring out when other people screw up, yeah? Teachers, you never have this problem with each other or with your children, right? Parents, adults, we have this problem, right? We point fingers. See, he's doing it wrong. And in Isaiah 58, the prophet says, if you remove the yoke from among you, you remove the burden from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light will rise and your gloom will be like noonday. And then the prophet goes on to say, your ancient ruins will be rebuilt. You shall raise up foundations of many generations you will be called the repairers of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. If you understand the why, if you understand the one that we follow, Jesus Christ was sent here to set people free, if you understand that, then you can stop the needle pointing, you can stop the anger and the vitriol and the divisiveness, and you can say we are called to be repairers of the breach. We are called to go across borders and barriers that separate and divide us, that the world would set up to set us against one another and to repair those breaches and to heal those who are sick and in need. And that's what Jesus calls us to be about. Jesus calls us to be people who welcome, who cross barriers, who connect, who connect with Sierra Leone, 
who connect with South Dallas, who connect with others because we have Jesus who went to the cross so that we may have life. When he came in this morning, that little boy over there, Anthony, your son, he pointed at the wall of the crosses and he said, look, church signs. Yeah, yeah. The cross says to us to put away the bickering, the finger pointing, the anger and the vitriol. To understand the law is a gift, but the law does not rule us. We do not worship it, that the gospel sets us free. And when we see someone in need, we don't say, come back tomorrow. We are called to serve and to love because that's what Jesus has done for us. And that's what Jesus is going to do for us in the sacrament of the altar and the body and blood poured out for us that sends us then into God's world to be repairers of the breach. So thanks be to God. We are called to be about this work. Thank you to you who have been visiting with us today. We are so proud and grateful to have you with us on this festival day. And I think that's probably enough. Amen.